हेलो नमस्ते माय नेम इज डॉक्टर रेखा राजेंद्र कुमार आई एम गायनेकोलॉजिस्ट एंड आईवीएफ स्पेशलिस्ट आई एम प्रैक्टिसिंग इन बैंगलोर दैट इज मिरेकल आईवीएफ हॉस्पिटल hospital and chandana hospital bangalore I have been practicing for the past 30 years in my practice i have come across this pcos or what we call as pcod women of all different kinds of age like they belong to all different age group even the girls of the adolescent age come to us girls of the middle age come to us those who are trying for pregnancy do come to us or even certain women who have finished their families also do come to us so uh, what i want to say is pcod is such a uh, problem uh, it encompasses the all the age group women it's not a big issue you don't have to worry about it as such it comes along with you but that does not mean it's a disease it is just a hormonal imbalance in the body it's a, a problem happen at the level of the hormones that are produced at the hypothalamus pituitary level or what we call as hpo axis that is hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis there is a disturbance in this orchestra of hormones and this happens in the women in the reproductive age group that is the women who has achieved menarche and after that the problem start because they present mainly as the menstrual disturbances these girls now what happens here i have told that it is a disturbance in the hormone this understanding between the certain hormones and that causes the problem now what this woman should do or what this girl should do as i have told that it is a uh, common in adolescent girls who are, have not got yet married so the fertility or the infertility getting babies is not their problem their problem is one the menstrual cycles have become very irregular in the sense what happens about the menstrual cycle is they are amenorrheic for quite a long time maybe even 2 months 3 months some people you may not believe that once in 6 months or only twice a year they have their menstruation even it happens so that certain women do get menstruation those who may women who are suffering from pcos i mean they get menstruation only as a withdrawal bleed in the sense if you give tablets they bleed and otherwise no but they cannot leave it like that in the sense if the woman does not get the period say 6 months of more than 3 months she should not think uh, that that is fine with me let me have my periods why get into all this problem it's a nuisance menstruation is a nuisance etc no it, that's not right the woman should get her menstruation once in at least 2 months that girl she should bleed once in 2 months at least because the endometrium that gets accumulated inside the uterus and cavity that's not right for it to remain as a long standing one when the girl gets aged say at the age of 50 years or something like that this endometrium can cause cancer or what we call is endometrial carcinoma so that's not right to leave that uh, menstruation uh, like it hap- let it happen whenever it, it should happen so she should see the doctor and get her menstruation once in at least Two to and a half months, if not once in every month. Like if it, even if it's not regular, at least once in one and a half to two months, she should get her period. What should she do other than that? She should check her thyroid because it's another problem. Thyroid is another associated problem. It has nothing to do with PCOS, but the periods can be irregular because of the thyroid problem also, and that has to be ruled out. That's what I mean. So that is also necessary. coming to the treatment part the person whatever age irrespective of age the lifestyle modification is very very important in the sense the woman should take care of her weight some girls even weigh more than 30 bmi and that's a gross uh, obesity so they should take care of that because i do have live examples the girls <coughs> or the women who come to me once they reduce their weight 
they automatically become much better like the cosmetic problems like their uh, hair growth in the unwanted part of the body like the thighs uh, the chest the thorax or the uh, anterior abdominal wall all this weight uh, the sorry the hair growth disappears uh, the acanthesis nigricans or what we call is a, that black patch that comes around the neck or the different body folds all this and even the pimples or what we call as the acne etc all this are going to vanish once the weight reduces so especially the adolescent girls they are so much worried about the cosmetic part of their uh, the appearance they are worried about so once they reduce their weight it's a multi uh, uh, pronged advantage in the sense one the because of the weight reduction their fertile uh, their periods become regular because the hormones come back to track and so the periods become regular one then second thing is their pimples the acanthosis nigricans that black patch what i was mentioning before or their uh, the abnormal hair growth in the body all these things disappear and they feel much better so the lifestyle modification includes weight reduction that's one and the second thing sometimes they may need the help of some drugs weight reduction is one is by the diet part that is they have to take care of their diet in the sense they have to concentrate so much on not taking much of carbohydrate it should be a more of protein rich diet with added more of antioxidant like fruits vegetables etc so the woman is supposed to take that kind of food and other than that the exercise is also important because the building muscle is also equally important because pc OS is also a condition where we, we where we call it as a metabolic syndrome in the sense there is a, uh, a there is chance of hyperglycemia in these women that is a increased blood sugar there is a chance of hyperinsulinemia which is a compensatory phenomenon to hyperglycemia uh, to reduce the blood sugar the insulin secreted from the pancreas also increases and that's called as hyperinsulinemia they also have the increased chance of cholesterol cholesterol increased cholesterol in the body or what we call as a hypercholesterolemia increased incidence of coronary artery disease etc so this all put together in a package is called as a metabolic syndrome so the weight reduction not only uh, takes care of their appearance other than that their lifestyle modification will take care of the uh, metabolic syndrome also uh, other than that sometimes they may have to take certain measures to get get that unwanted hair removed from the body etc and sometimes we have to take uh, the administer certain drugs to them in the sense for their menorrhagia where the menstruation does not so stop even after say two weeks uh, that's a heavy menstrual flow or uh, they not got the periods on time like we have to give the withdrawal bleeding kind of tablets like progesterone that's a medroxy progesterone we have to give them or sometimes even the oral contraceptive pills we have to put the woman on where it's a combination of ethinyl estradiol and the progesterone so these are all the drugs we give in the adolescent girls or the women who are not in the reproductive age group bracket but there are certain women who do come to us with infertility also pcod is one of the very important causes it's almost a 90% reason for the ovulatory infertility like the woman is uh, is otherwise fine the male factor is fine the husband is normal the tubes of the woman are fine the uterus is quite normal there is no problem but she is not conceiving because she is not able to produce these eggs the quality eggs on time these kind of women are rich in eggs like the antral follicle count is quite normal it's quite high rather it's on the higher side but these eggs are not quite normal in the sense the development of these eggs are quite not okay they're either they suddenly shoot up or sometimes it's a very resistant kind of ovaries where how much ever drugs whether you give the oral ovulogens or the like the clomiphene citrate or letrozole 
it does not does not help and sometimes we may have to go to gonadotrophins and a certain times in spite of gonadotrophins that just don't respond and these are called as resistant ovaries so in this kind of women we may have to take them for a longer protocol with longer oral ovulogens or a small dose of long uh, course of gonadotrophins and then take them for iui that's intrauterine insemination or sometimes we may even have to shift them for IVF. When we do IVF, we have to be very, very careful in these women because they are highly prone for what is called as OHSs, that is ovulation, uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. And so we have to take care of that uh, with certain measures, uh, which I don't think I have to explain here. Uh, so uh, in summary, what I want to say is like it is not a disease. It's a just, just little disturbance, endocrine uh, disturbance. Uh, misunderstanding between the hormones which can be very much corrected by the person herself she can take care of herself and also take help of doctors like me who are uh, more than willing to help <clears throat> help these kind of women yeah thank you and uh, good luck to you all